Before we wrap up today, I'd love to do a little sort with you all. I'll model a few examples and then see if you can jump in with some ideas before I lay the cards down. All right, our first example, we're gonna decide if this is a physical adaptation or a behavioral adaptation. Zebra stripes. Are the stripes on a zebra a physical adaptation or a behavioral adaptation? Ms. McCray's mind is thinking about what each of these different types of adaptations are. She knows that one is about an animal's body and another one is about their behaviors. Well, zebra stripes are a part of an animal's body. So she knows that zebra stripes are a physical adaptation. Next example is a bee stinger. Is that a part of the animal's body or a behavior they use to survive? Well, I know that a stinger is attached to that bee's body, so it must be a physical adaptation. Our next example is an opossum playing dead. Hmm. Is that something about the animal's body or is it a behavior that the animal is using in order to survive? What do you all think? All right, I hope you were thinking that this is an action they're using in order to avoid a predator. And if it's an action, then it's a behavioral adaptation. Let's look at another example. What about when your cat at home or some of our wilder cat friends hiss out in the wild? Well, I'm thinking that that's an action that those animals are taking in order to warn another animal. And if it's an action, I know it's a behavior, so it must be a behavioral adaptation. This next example is one of my favorites and my class will know why. An elephant's trunk. Elephants are my favorite animal. An elephant's trunk, is that a physical adaptation or a behavioral adaptation? Well, if I'm thinking about an elephant's trunk, I know that it's a part of that animal's body. So it must be a physical adaptation. We'll do two more before we move on. Our next example, a skunk spraying a bad smell. I'm gonna give you all a couple of seconds to decide if you think this is a physical adaptation or a behavioral adaptation. Make sure you think about why you're putting this example under physical or behavioral adaptations. I'll give you a couple of seconds now. Well, hmm, let's see if you had the right idea. Well, a skunk spraying a bad smell is an action that that skunk is taking in order to get a predator to leave it alone. And if it's an action that the animal is taking to survive, it is a behavioral adaptation. How'd you do? Let's look at one last example. Penguins in a huddle. Go ahead, take a few seconds to decide if you think this is a physical adaptation or a behavioral adaptation. And make sure you explain to yourself why you chose your answer. All right, penguins grouping together. This is an action that the penguins are taking in order to stay warm and to stay safe from some of their Arctic predators. So if it's an action they're taking, it must be a behavioral adaptation. How'd you do? All right, boys and girls. So today we talked a lot about different ways that animals survive in nature and in the wild. We talked about two big categories of animal adaptation. Where we know that an adaptation is anything that an animal has as a body part to survive or does as a behavior to respond to something that happens in its environment. Physical adaptations are what an animal has as a body part to survive. Specifically, we talked about camouflage, when an animal blends into their habitat like the tree frog, or even a green inchworm in the grass, or a snake out in the desert, or a deer in the forest. We talked about mimicry, when an organism has features that are similar to a different organism, 
Even if only one animal or plant is poisonous or tastes bad, both organisms are protected. Animals can also mimic behaviors, sounds, or scents. Specifically here with mimicry, we talked about the two different types of butterflies. The viceroy butterfly mimics the monarch butterfly because the monarch butterfly is poisonous and tastes bad to their predators. Because they both look like the poisonous butterfly, predators leave them both alone. We also talked about several other different animal body parts that allow them to survive. We talked about a shark's teeth being a part of its body, a physical adaptation that helps it to survive, and a duck's webbed feet that allow it to survive by moving through its habitat and finding its food sources. You can see here there are several other examples of physical adaptations. Fins, wings, legs, and muscles. Teeth, claws, and venom. Body coverings like fur or blubber and fat on a whale or other marine wildlife. Also their teeth, beaks, claws, and their different shaped mouths can actually be a really important physical adaptation for a lot of different animals. Once we finished talking about those physical adaptations, we also talked about some behavioral adaptations or what an animal does as a behavior in response to something happening. We talked about hibernation and dormancy. These two ideas are very similar because they talk about a deep sleep or a time when an animal or a tree is going to conserve their energy through the winter months. We also talked about migration, which is when a group of the same species move together in order to survive and find food and a safer habitat for them during those colder months. All right. And then we also talked about just some other different types of behavioral adaptations that allow an animal to survive, like a prairie dog digging holes or a squirrel storing nuts, or even that skunk who sprays a nasty scent on its um, predators to stay safe. Next week, you're going to read a little bit more about some other behavioral adaptations, which is why I have an orange sticky note here covering up this bottom part of the chart. But um, I hope that you enjoyed learning about the different types of animal adaptations today with me. Um, as you go through your week and your reading, I hope that you learn a little bit more about our animal adaptations. Um, and while you're home, I think about taking a walk outside and seeing if you can identify any animals in their natural habitat and consider what kinds of adaptations those animals might have there in order to survive. All right, that's it for now. Happy learning, third graders.